guys, welcome back to another video. We are finally back in the hospital for the second round of immunotherapy, which is crazy. I never thought that I'd be excited to be here for immunotherapy after the first round, after that last round of immunotherapy, which was pretty brutal, if I'm being honest. Um, I have different hopes and expectations for this round. We'll get into that here in just a little bit. Now this has gotten pushed off for about three weeks, which is why we're so excited to be here. And uh, we were waiting on Kendall's blood counts to come up. We were waiting on her ANC, which is like a white blood cell immune system kind of uh, indicator. So we're waiting on that to come up. But her platelets uh, was the other thing we were waiting for to naturally come up. Historically, she's gotten platelet transfusions, which is kind of helped that, but they wanted them to naturally come up because if they didn't, then the immunotherapy treatment would have been really, really rough on her. Um, and they wanted to see her body be able to recover on its own and that sort of thing. So we're here for the second round of immunotherapy and fingers crossed it goes much smoother than last time. Kendall, what's up? Hi. How's it going? Good. Good. You look amazing for have gotten some chemo already this today. Mm. Yeah, no big deal. You're pretty awesome. <laughs> you ready to get this next immunotherapy treatment over with? Yes. What have you been up to today? Um, laying in bed, running around like a psychopath, watching fishies in the fish tank. And that's all I can remember. Alright, let me do a quick sort of 30 second recap on Kendall as a whole. There's so many new subscribers and viewers here that not everyone probably knows exactly what Kendall is fighting and dealing with and how we got to where we are now. So real quick, in December of 2022, uh, about eight months ago, Kendall was diagnosed with a rare cancer called neuroblastoma. Uh, it's usually found in like newborns and, and infants up to about four, maybe five years old usually. Kendall was eight at the time of diagnosis, so she was on the older side of things and it was a little more rare. Uh, she was also only stage two, which was really great and comforting. It had not spread through her whole body. It was not in her bone marrow or anything like that, but she did have a huge tumor in her abdomen, which is how we discovered this to begin with. It was about 10 inches by nine inches by seven inches or so. So if you can imagine, it was a really large tumor in an eight-year-old's body. Um, she has gone through now five rounds of chemo. She had the tumor resected, uh, as well as a kidney, uh, adrenal glands, lymph nodes that had spread to some, some close by lymph nodes and stuff. So she had a really major surgery. It was like a six and a half hour surgery to get that removed. And then we were really hoping and praying that she would be sort of cancer free and be in remission at that point and that we would move on to the stem cell transplant. Uh, but she wasn't. The scans and tests showed that she still had live active cancer and they made a judgment call to change the treatment plan a little bit and to do two rounds of immunotherapy first before doing the stem cell transplant. They wanted her to be the Curie score of zero going into the stem cell transplant and she was at a Curie score of two with that little bit of soft tissue uh, active cancer like at the tumor bed that sort of thing so we've been through the one round of immunotherapy so far and now we're getting ready to start round two so that gets us to where we are today receiving the second round of immunotherapy we're hoping this goes much smoother the first round was was rough it sucked the immunotherapy treatment she gets the antibody drug that she gets is it's painful it attaches itself to a protein cell that attacks the cancer cell, but it also attaches itself to the nerve cells and attacks those, so it becomes very painful for her. So she will be on a constant drip of morphine for the next five or six days. Now, on the last treatment, we were able to figure out the ratio of how quickly they could do the immunotherapy drug and how much morphine they could do and what that ratio looked like to keep her comfortable and to get the treatment going as fast as possible because they can run it anywhere from 10 to 20 hours and uh, we want to get it over with as quickly as possible and not drag it on for the full 20 hours if we can help it. So yeah, now because we have it figured out from last time, we'll be able to start off with that same ratio that we ended with last time that we knew worked and um, we should be 
a much smoother experience this time. They're not actually starting the immunotherapy until tomorrow. So it was day one today where she got chemo and then tomorrow will be chemo and then immunotherapy and they'll do the same thing like that for the next five days. So we're just hanging out the rest of tonight, manage a little bit of nausea from this chemo, but Kendall's doing really well at the moment. Feeling like a million bucks or what? Yeah. Was it nice to have a nice little break as you took your sweet time getting your platelets back? You trying to bury yourself in the blankets down there? No, I'm just so tired. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we'll get some dessert for after dinner and uh, get a good night of sleep, huh? Daddy? Yeah. Do they have, um, whatchamacallit, uh, quesadillas? They might have quesadillas. Is I that what you want? Cool. <laughs> Love you. Love you. Mwah. It's going to be funny? Yeah. Why? Because I'm going to be hallucinating. You hear this, kid? She thinks it's gonna be funny that she's hallucinating. She doesn't really remember much from the last treatment, which is great, quite honestly. But she does know she was hallucinating. She remembers seeing things. She remembers the stuff that I told her about. We recorded some stuff. You guys saw some things in the previous video. So she's actually really excited to see what the whole hallucination thing. She's like, you gotta film every time. So I'm gonna do my best to capture every little moment but sometimes it's just a random moment you'll wake up from your sleep you'll say something funny and go right back to sleep and that's i can't get my camera out fast enough Dang it. oh and i'm gonna be talking in my sleep yeah you talk a lot <laughs> yeah and one time i thought you were on the phone with cameron because you're like no cameron i wanted the blue one you know and i was like i remember that i was like dang you know, and then I realized, and then you were like right back to sleep, and I was like, oh, she wasn't talking to Cameron. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, so she's not phased at all, obviously, by coming to do this treatment. Again, we're just kind of looking forward to getting this treatment done, ripping the band aid off, if you will, continue to attack that cancer, and then we'll be able to move on with the stem cell transplant. We're going down to the atrium. They let her go for a little while. We're gonna go play some air hockey, maybe a little arts and crafts, and you're gonna lose. No, no. Yeah, you are. No, no. Yeah, you are. No, no. Let's see. I remember in um, Buddy Veal, and he went up an elevator, he just pressed a little bit. <laughs> 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 but that was in the Empire State Building. We were going to go play in the atrium, the indoor atrium, which is just inside those windows there. Play some games, beat Kendall in some air hockey, that sort of thing. But they're closed. A lot of stuff here at this hospital shuts down and is like very limited or no hours on the weekends, which is really silly because everyone's here on the weekends still. But like the Starbucks closes uh, on the weekends, can't get coffee and that sort of thing. It's like, it's really bizarre, really bizarre. Anyways, we are fortunate enough to have this big outdoor area. And Kendall, the girl who got chemo this morning is just like hanging out, playing outside, making sand castles, like no big deal, huh? Yeah. Feel good? Yeah. You look incredible the and gonna brandy what are you doing you trying to figure out what we're gonna eat for dinner yeah i heard a helicopter yeah it's gonna land i don't know i do hear it though we're just trying to soak up as much sun as we can get her outside moving around um you know, one last time because tomorrow the morphine starts, the immunotherapy starts, and it'll be, you know, she'll be zonked out and sleeping for the next four or five days, maybe six. <laughs> Alright, 
Kendall wants ice cream, Froyo to be specific. So I gotta find, I think there's a TCBY not too far from here, which is what I think and I'm pretty sure. Oh, cool. 1.9 miles, TCBY. Frozen yogurt, here we come. All right, that's what I call mission success. We got Kendall brownie fudge yogurt with strawberry boba, Oreo crumbs, and a gummy frog. I didn't pick it out. That's what she requested via FaceTime. I hope she likes it. I tried to get the camera on before she ate it. How'd I do? Good. Is it good? Did you eat that frog yet? No. I'm, I'm saving that for the last part. Saving the frog for last? Okay. All right. to get this party started. Uh, we've already done chemo this morning, which you saw. That's what's in this green bag here is the syringe with the chemo in it. And that is just about done. Uh, we got to finish the bolus, uh, really hydrating her really well. And then we'll get started with morphine and then the Unitux, which is the immunotherapy antibody deal. How you feeling, Kendall? Good. Good? A little bored this morning? So excited for morphine. It's going. I mean, I guess people get excited for morphine all the time. Like, yeah. I'm in pain. Give me more. <laughs> Give me more no, buttons. She said she's excited to see what she starts seeing on the walls. Kendall. Kendall. She's excited to hallucinate. Is what she's basically. What she's Do you remember saying. seeing the spider in the bathroom? I respect that. When you one. jumped out of the bathtub. <laughs> Do you remember that? If you, your head hurts. Yeah, a little headache. Okay. Okay, we are exactly an hour in so far, and this has been a completely different experience than it was last time. At this point last time, she was very uncomfortable, quite a bit of pain. We couldn't hit the morphine bolus button fast enough, um, and they were continuing to kind of play with those levels with of morphine, and they can only increase it so much every so often, so it took a while for us to get to that point of comfort for her. Now this time we were able to start where we left off last time, which was 1.2 ml per hour. So very small amount, but it's, it's the right amount for her. She also was asking about that she didn't really remember the button so much from last time and she was asking why she would need it and I said if she was in more pain and she asked why she would be in pain. So um, obviously, that whole concept was out the window for her, thankfully. So there's a little bit of positivity there, but you can see she's she's doing great. How are you feeling so far? Good. Yeah, you're getting sleepy. Yeah. I'm proud of you. You're doing good. I haven't had to push the button at all. Nope. You might not have to. You might not have to. So as I said before, morphine is running at 1.2 and the Unitux, the immunotherapy, is running at six ml per hour. And we're hoping to get this up to 10, which is the max amount they can do it. They started at five, so we've already increased it once. 
and that hopefully we can get cranked up to 10, which will allow us to get this whole thing done much faster. So fingers crossed that this continues and it's smooth sailing from here. May have spoken a little too soon. Uh, things were going great initially, the first two hours or so, and then it was like that two to three hour mark. Things went downhill pretty quickly in terms of how Kendall was feeling. Um, the pain started to creep up pretty quickly, and uh, when that pain set in, just as, it was almost exactly like last time. It hits her in the back really hard and then she starts to hold her breath and then she says she has trouble breathing and her oxygen levels go down and they bring in the oxygen and put the little cannula in her nose and then um, it's just excruciating pain. A lot of tears, a lot of there's nothing you can do, these very hopeless feelings and it sucks. It is not fun for anybody whatsoever. So, you know, hitting the button as much as you can. is It can only hit it every 15 minutes. So like you just can't hit it fast enough. And then they, you know, bring doctors in and they kind of evaluate it and see, do we need to increase this? Or do we need to decrease this? Or what do we need to do? So they did both. They increased the morphine. They decreased the immunotherapy uh, and let things simmer. It took a while. It, it was, I think it was about a two hour ordeal before everything sort of simmered down. We got the pain under control and she finally got to sleep. And I kept reminding her, you know, don't be afraid to close your eyes and try to go to sleep because when you're asleep, you really don't feel the pain. So eventually things calmed down and she was able to get to sleep. And they've since then increased the immunotherapy back up to try to get this, to try to get the whole thing done faster instead of doing this over 18 hours. We're trying to shorten that up and get it done as quickly as possible within reason and making sure that she remains comfortable. So that's where we're at so far. I think we're kind of over the hump, kind of like last time. So hopefully she's asleep for the next, you know, three, four days. She'll be up obviously to go to the bathroom and hopefully we can get a, a few uh, bites to eat in her in the meantime as well. But um, we'll see how things go and as usual, I'll keep you guys updated. Okay, day three update. Uh, it was almost like textbook exactly the same as the first round, which is unfortunate because we were sort of under the impression uh, that it would be a such so much better this time around and that sort of thing. So we've learned to take a lot of that information that we get and we hear from the doctors and nurses that it'll be a lot better or whatever they say is going to be. It's, it's nice to know sort of what to expect, but a lot of times you just have to take it with a grain of salt because everybody's so different. And a lot, oftentimes we'll explain what's happening. You're like, oh yeah, that happens sometimes. And you're like, I thought that wasn't a thing, but Anyways, in no particular order here, she ended up having a fever last night, so they had to draw blood. They do these blood cultures so that they can see if there's any bacteria growing, and it's like a 24-hour process. They do a nasal swab, sort of like a COVID test, and they test it for all kind of like respiratory viruses and all sorts of things. That came back negative. The cultures came back fine, clear, no uh, bacterial infection or anything like that. The fevers is a known thing with immunotherapy, so we sort of expect that, and she currently still has a fever now and they sort of came back up. They had gone away for a while and then she had 104 fever and 102. She still has 102 fever now this evening. But the other thing is that she wasn't peeing and the same thing happened last time where the morphine really causes her to have this water retention. She doesn't go to the bathroom and then kind of judge that by how much intake she has and how much output and then they can see her weight. Her weight had gone up because she was receiving fluids. She was drinking water and she wasn't like, getting it out. So her weight started to go up and they're like, we really need to get her to try to go to the bathroom. And she got up, she got out of bed. She tried to go to the bathroom. She felt like she needed to go to the bathroom, but she couldn't. Very similar to like the constipation situations that we experienced 
on the last go around. So then they brought in this bladder scanner, which is, it's like an ultrasound machine more or less, but they do an ultrasound of her bladder and they can measure how much uh, urine she has in her bladder. And it said it was over 500 milliliter, milliliters, which is quite a bit. So um, they gave her some Lasix to help her pee and that worked slowly. Um, thankfully it worked because the next option beyond that was to put a catheter in and, and drain it. And none of us wanted to, to let it get to that point. So thankfully Kendall was a trooper and she kept getting up and trying to go to the bathroom. And she did a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit. So uh, they were really happy with that and we were all happy with that. And that went on until probably three, maybe 4 a.m. Um, before we finally got to sleep. And then today has been pretty smooth sailing. Um, she did throw up a couple of times randomly and she's had these fevers, but otherwise no crazy pain. Immunotherapy has been running at 10, which is like full, full capacity, uh, which is great. We can get this thing over with a little bit sooner and um, we can get to bed and move on to the next day. So that is the day three update. We'll see how things go tonight. Day four update. Everything's been nice and smooth. No hiccups, no issues. Kendall's had a couple of fevers, but that's it, no big deal. Uh, she's been sleeping most of the time, and Brandy is also back there sleeping and uh, catching up on some rest. And I'm trying to get some work done, so, so far, so good. Good morning. Hi. How you doing? Good. Good. Okay. You know, you were yelling at somebody in your sleep a little bit ago. I don't remember that. I don't know what you said. That's it! <laughs> or something. What did she say, Brandy? What? When she was yelling. Yeah, I don't know. Let go. I don't know. It was you were you were yelling at somebody. You were pretty mad. You remember what you were dreaming about? I guess it wasn't very funny though, was it? Probably yelling at me. I don't know <laughs> How you feeling? It's just tired. You're such a tough kid. I'm so proud of you. Are you hungry? Thirsty? No. Wait, it's not in the water. You excited to be done with this and eat some food? What do you want to have to eat first? Crab legs. <laughs> Always the crab legs. That's fine. You can get whatever crab legs you want. What else? What do you have for dessert after crab legs? Sweet frog? You see something up there? Mm -hmm. I'm just cutting open a bear. Okay, last day of treatment. So far, so good. Yesterday was very uneventful, as you saw. Uh, last night there was a little bit of kind of stuff going on in the room, but there's been no issues with Kendall She has been an absolute trooper and you guys can't understand how tough this kid is and, and, and dealing with what she's dealing with These kids are absolutely incredible and, and your thoughts and prayers and kind words and comments mean so much to all of us So thank you for that. But as I just said, you know, we are we're going on the last bit of the treatment now She's already had chemo this morning uh, and now we are on the immunotherapy. It's cranked up to seven so they can go up a little bit each hour So hopefully we can get up to ten pretty quickly and get this thing over with by around 2 a.m And at that point they'll really start to back off of the morphine They'll cut the dose to about half and then uh, in the morning They'll just turn it off once we kind of wake up probably around nine or ten. They'll cut the morphine all together We'll evaluate how she's doing at that point and as long as she's fever free for 24 hours, which fingers crossed, no fever today, but she has had quite a few fevers over the last few days, uh, which has been really the worst symptom of all of this, which is really not that big of a deal. So that's saying a lot. Uh-oh, stand by, be right back. 
she's uh she's seeing things she's like out of her mind uh, which is you know it's 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 funny it's a little sad but it's kind of funny and it was the thing she was the most excited about so I figured we can all be excited about it and so I, I was able to capture some of it at, right after she started bringing it up I grabbed my phone and, and filmed it so here's a few of these moments it's it's kind of funny Hannah painted her face in your dream? I was about to smack her. <laughs> Look at me. Alright. You were gonna smack Hannah? Yeah. For painting her face? No, she painted her face. And you were gonna smack her for it? Yeah. <laughs> That's messed up, dude. Why is there two keypads? There's two keypads? Yeah. Let me see. And that one. And that one. You see two keypads? Yeah. Let me close our eyes, okay? You want your shoes? Your shoes? What for? My shoes. What about them? They're like my shoes. Huh? They're not like my shoes. What do you need your shoes for? I need to wipe them. You need to wipe your shoes? How come? Are they dirty? Your nose? My shoes. I don't understand. Did you get snot on your shoes? Mm. What do you need to wipe your shoes for? My shoes. It's okay. It was on the Okay. How, can I give you some toilet paper? You want to wipe them with this? Okay, so that one I was really confused by. I couldn't understand why she wanted her shoes until I watched it back just now. And I think she was trying to say tissues. Like she wanted a tissue to wipe her face because she sat up thinking she was going to throw up. And I think she wanted a tissue and she could only get out shoes. She's having a really hard time talking um, right now. Like she's just kind of so loopy with the morphine. I think she wanted her a tissue. So now I feel kind of bad. This next one's funny though. It's gonna get eaten, but the guinea pig. Another guinea pig is gonna eat the guinea pig? No. The guinea pig won't die, it's okay. Now the other thing that we have to consider is once we get home and how we're treating it, because if you remember from the last video, last time we got home, she ended up very dehydrated. She was backed up. She couldn't hold anything down. She was throwing up everything she put in and we ended up back at the ER uh, at a different hospital a couple different times before we got this all situated and whatnot. So we're really trying to think ahead on how to prevent that situation from happening. Um, one is like starting the Miralax, getting that going, making sure that she's going to the bathroom. I'm also like 24 hours or so from maybe starting the feeding pump. So if she doesn't eat, um, maybe by tomorrow morning, I'm going to go ahead and get the feeding pump going and get her things going through her belly and through her gut get things you know working because the morphine will really keep that stuff from working it causes constipation and all these kinds of issues that piled up to be the problem we ran into last time so i'm going to keep ahead of that um, no one's concerned about that it's been about four days since she ate last time she went like nine or ten days without eating so kind of a different scenario so we're hoping to be able to stay on top of it and prevent that whole mess this time look who's awake Barely. <laughs> she is playing games with her friends on the iPad, which is great. I love when she's able to wake up, have the distraction of her friends. She's got some incredible friends who are always, always there for her, always jumping on, playing games uh, as much as she can tolerate it. Uh, and it's an awesome distraction, you know, so she's doing good. We, uh, st I really don't want to even jinx it by saying no fever, but... 
we'll knock on wood. Still no fevers. It was getting up there, it was like 99.7. They consider a fever 100.4. So we're getting down to the wire. We gotta make it like six more hours or so. And then they'll, this will all be kind of getting turned off and shutting down and that sort of thing. So we're pushing through at the last minute. I'm just like, fingers crossed we get there with no more fevers. But if we get one, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, an extra day in the hospital. Oh, she passed out while she was playing with her friends. Look. Good morning. Last night. Last night was rough. Um, first of all, she ended up getting a fever again at like 7.30 p.m. just after the last update. So that's a thing. Um, but it's all good. No big deal there. The worst part was that at about midnight, the pain started to creep in again. Just, just like last time. Like it crept up and it got worse and worse and worse. And then like we're pressing the button every 15 minutes and it just wasn't touching it. So they came in, they did a bolus and did a, you know, a quick dose on top of that. Plus we hit the button that still wasn't hardly touching it. And then they increased the rate. And after about an hour and a half to two hours, we finally got her pain settled. And it's just the worst feeling in the world. And she's just so upset and she's crying and her back hurts, her head hurts, her neck hurts. And she, she's just, wants it to stop and she hates it and it's just this you just feel so helpless and you just it's really tough to watch you know especially watching the transition from the beginning of this video where she's running around and playing in the sand and having a good time and she's just like a healthy normal kid to seeing the transition of just feeling like crap with the medication even though it's doing good things for her it's just it's it's tough it's tough um, so we'll be here for another day still. Um, technically they could let us go at 7.30 tonight, but they want to hold on to her, continue to hydrate her. Her creatinine levels, her kidney function levels are a little bit elevated still, and they want to bring those down because, again, she only has one kidney. Um, and I want to avoid the dehydration issue that we had last time where we ended up back at the ER the following day. So we might as well just stay here, get all that squared away, and then we will be able to go home on Friday, which I think would be like day seven or something at that point i don't know no i don't even know how many days i'm into this at this point but but there's that so as long as we get home by friday afternoon will be good we want to try to make it to cameron's birthday party saturday and uh try to enjoy that for sure The other thing is that she still has a lot of fluid retention, um, meaning that her body's just holding on to all these fluids and she's not peeing as often, but her face is really puffy. Um, you can see it in her body and her weight is elevated. So they've given her some more Lasix to try to shed that water out of her tissue and see if we can get her peeing and, and get that fluid out of her. So that's, uh, so that's the update for now. Keep you in the loop. It's been a few days and we finally just made it home. Uh, we ended up getting held up uh, at the hospital for what, two more, two more extra days because of fevers. Um, and that was really all that was going on, so I kind of quit filming. But we did make it back, as you just saw, uh, in time for Cameron's birthday party. We left the hospital and literally pulled right into the birthday party. We were only like 10 minutes late. so. We got to hang out there for a little bit. Kendall got to enjoy Cameron's 12th birthday party for a little while. Did you have fun? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling right now? Tired. Yeah? Okay. Everyone else is here doing well. Hi, Hannah. Can you say hi? Hi. 
Hi, hey, Brandy. Hi. There she is. Hi. How was your birthday party? It was good. Yeah? Hannah, yeah, stop. You looked amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, now that we're back, <laughs> oh, Hannah, we're just playing the game with the feeding pump. We're trying to keep food in her, trying to keep her hydrated to avoid the same issues that we had last time and having to rush back to the hospital. So we'll keep fevers down, hopefully, and uh, keep her in a good way and just slowly recovering day by day. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Shh.